Hi, I'm Sonny Janesco. And I'm Matt Hayes, and we're on the site of the former Shadok Hospital and Sanatorium, and we have been getting all kinds of information from Robert Williamson, an expert on the subject. Uh, of course, uh, he's the man behind this book. Editor of the book, Shadok, More Than a Sanatorium, and we just spent some time chatting with him about the history of the future site of Shadok Heights, and it is really incredible. Yeah, when you know some of the stories, it, it really is incredible. And, and of course, uh, they are going to take elements of these buildings and build them into the new site. So there will be a piece of history that continues with this. So the, the, the lower city uh, was populated first, and then, and then people uh, gravitated to the mountain later. Uh, around what uh, time period are we talking about uh, this being constructed. Okay, this, this all began in the uh, turn of the century. Okay. In 1900, there was an epidemic of tuberculosis, and a lot of it had been brought in uh, from people coming from Europe. In fact, 50% of the people arriving in Canada uh, had tuberculosis. It was a very virulent disease that was hard to uh, identify it. If it uh, was in your lungs and you coughed, it was airborne. It spread like a cold. And there was no cure for it? No cure. Once they got sick, they had to be kept away from the general population. When they decided to put a sanatorium up here on the mountain, they did so because no one else wanted it anywhere. Uh, and so they finally uh, decided this isolated property up here on the Macklin Farm, away from the city, was where they could build a sanatorium. That's a fruit tree. That's symbolic of this area because this was an orchard. This is oh, where the Macklin farm was located, right here. And that's where the, the uh, first sanatorium began. The, the Macklin farmhouse was in fact the headquarters. And then they started building tents, and then the tents built into cottages, and then the cottages got bigger, and then finally you had these large hospital buildings. So that's the process, it went through phases during that 100 year cycle. So do you know, like, like the, the, the Bruce building here, like what, what was its purpose in the day? It, for one of its purposes was education, because you had children here, uh, and the children had to be schooled. Well, this was the largest sanatorium in the British Empire really? at, its, at its height. Wow. It covered 200 acres. And it wasn't until uh, 1944 that they discovered that an earth fungus, of all things, would uh, destroy the uh, TB bacillus. Well, since the facility was here and all these magnificent buildings were already here, once they were being emptied because they no longer had the, the tuberculosis problem, they had to find some other use. And the first use they started putting it to was as a school. Uh, a, a medical school, a nursing school, a radiology school, all the things that other hospitals didn't have room for were now being placed here. And then the government decided they were going to give those instructional facilities to Mohawk College. And so that was taken away. So they had to find some other use for these buildings. And uh, what it ended up doing was bringing in all of the uh, illnesses that couldn't be treated in other hospitals, whether it was pediatrics, uh, prosthetics, artificial limbs, uh, children's diseases, uh, a multitude of various uh, health problems that couldn't be dealt with in general hospitals, and they all ended up coming here. So that's what kept this place growing and busy right up until the last 20 years. Well, it was the largest sanatorium in, in uh, the British Empire at one point. So this is a significant piece of Hamilton's history. That's why one of the conditions I laid down when I was helping to write this book is that we must install a plaque here so the people will remember what happened here in, in years to come. To learn how you can become part of this historic, historical area, go to shadokheights.ca.